or Megamon, Royal Knight, Epic Gamer, Slim Thick. Oh! My goodness. Has been the face of the Digimon franchise for a long old time and nobody can tell me otherwise. Milk to oblivion, but that's okay. And if you're hating, just know we wouldn't have got this far otherwise. The Jogras OG came back in Digimon Adventure 2020 and changed the game. This isn't just Yggdrasil's baby boy. This isn't the product of some spaghetti hoops Digimon lore has been sewn together through a singular piece of string. Digimon Adventure 2020, for all of the controversy and its many flaws, certainly gives newcomers to the franchise an easy gateway into understanding this version of Omegamon. In this video, we're going to recall all the events of Omegamon in the 2020 reboot, whilst also explaining that thought processes at different stages of watching the reboot, why they changed, were some things done well, the symbolism, how it was written in a nice condensed version. We could go on, but your time is valuable. And thus here we are to understand Omegamon in Digimon Adventure 2020. I hope you enjoy. Digimon Adventure 2020, having drawn to a close recently, it gave us a spectacular finale of which we'd seen the anime debut of Omegamon Alter S. Long awaited, I may add, after the Chosen Ones bring about back-to-back -back miracles. Now Omegamon has been featured many times across the franchise, as we all are very much aware of this. So I can understand if folks were a little bit bothered by the same old story, so to speak. Be it the Royal Knights, Yggdrasil narrative, be it emails, but this time, in Digimon Adventure 2020, Omegamon has been rebranded. Yes, it is a Holy Knight, Royal Knight, as it's stated, but not as we know it. Omegamon in the reboot universe has a different role and purpose. As we know it is named the Holy Knight, but it could very well be the only one that exists, or at least the first to exist in that universe. And it wasn't made in the same way as presented in our war game either. In the reboot, Omegamon's had a very integral part of saving the digital world ever since the digital world's birth preserving existence and battling the great catastrophe in its many forms. And most notably, it was created both with and without the Chosen Ones being involved. So this Omegamon is very different to the ones before it. A different backstory, a different function, which interweaves into the reboot universe itself. And I think everything about Omegamon in 2020 was developed pretty well, whilst all this information was given very far apart. With this huge journey to Fargo Millennium on crater gap in the reboot, where there is just nothing on Omegamon for like ever. The information is still there. People keep bringing up this point about Omegamon's previous appearances in the reboot in episode 2, 3, and episode 18. As a way of saying, you know, this lowered my excitement for the finale in the reboot. But I just can't relate to that feeling if Omegamon was created to stop the great catastrophe itself in its many forms. If it didn't appear in the ancient war, confirmed to be Negative Mon, I'm still not saying its name. Okay, Abadomon, and against Argomon and Nidhogmon. Pulling out Omegamon episode 66 would have just been out of the blue, and it would make less sense narratively, because if those previous appearances never happened, you would then be asking yourself, well, why didn't Omegamon appear here when it was needed to fight the thing which it was designed to fight? Do you see the problem with this? And plus, they had no idea what Omegamon really was at the times in which it appeared. It was just called the Great Power, a miracle without intent or understanding. But the difference is now, after episode 63 and into 66, we understand why it appears. We fully grasp what it is, and by we, I mean the Chosen. So this was a build-up of the true post-Crest Quest version of Omegamon, fully realised, only with a big J-turn in between in the reboot. But nevertheless, it takes nothing away from the consistency of Omegamon's existence and being. So my friends, let's take this journey through the reboot to understand fully all the thought processes at each stage. Omegamon's 2020 debut in episodes 2 and 3. There were several head nods to Hikari and Takedu, and plus the Holy Digimon at this point in time were captured. No explanation, just a miracle in the face of one of many stages of the Great Catastrophe. At this stage, it made very little sense. Of course, it took everyone by surprise when Omegamon showed up in the first three episodes of the reboot with a huge battle in the network. It was our war game, rehashed. Not only had Garumon and Greymon not even attained the ultimate level yet, perfect. They had just evolved into their champion forms. And it even feels weird that the immediate bounce back from being defeated by Argomon was instead of evolving further to the ultimate level, perfect. It's combining two Omegamon. You know, just in your head, Metal Greymon is surely more in reach in terms of the power required than Omegamon is. That's how it feels. But then this is a misunderstanding of Omegamon in the reboot. And this is of course intentional 
as it was supposed to be explained later. It was of course designed for newer viewers to Digimon, newer people to the franchise, it was supposed to be a mystery. It was for many months in fact that I made videos of Ono Megamon in 2020 trying to make sense of it all, but I feel for the newcomers, is the point in the vagueness. And maybe it's worth noting that the black orb in the network, which was of course Abadamon, was there at the same time. Omegamon and Abadamon being in a similar subspace might have had something to do with it. Next up, there's Omegamon and Valdumon's flashback in episode five. Now, a few people reminded me of this as if I didn't know, but I think there's a misunderstanding of my comment, is that Omegamon here felt like a flash forward since Valdumon didn't reference Omegamon verbally at all. And then also showed eight of the mega level Digimon specifically at the end of the war. At the end of the flashback. Plus, if you couple episode 5 with episode 31 for reference, Lotmon 2 recalled this memory in the same way. Omegamon wasn't in the flashback of the battle, there was no reference to Omegamon, there was just that quick snapshot of Omegamon which Taiji had seen. There wasn't even the memory of Omegamon defeating Millenniumon, which is what actually happened according to Valkyriemon episode 63. So again, it kind of sounds like Omegamon just doesn't exist at this point in time, in that war. That's why it felt like a flash forward to me. All of these scenes in the war that can remember but Omegamon just isn't there. You know, you think the tide turning great power would be mentioned in the Holy War, but I guess not. So for all these reasons, it would make you feel like Omegamon was a new phenomenon brought about by the Chosen being in the digital world. So how do we explain the fact that these two Holy Digimon who had their influence in the war itself, who were there alongside Omegamon, don't recall the thing that allowed them to win, or at least stalemate the war in the end? Well, given Valkyrie's accurate recollection of the war, most of the Digimon were actually defeated and or losing at that time. So would it really be out of the question that Cherubimon and Valdemon were defeated? before Omegamon showed up. This would probably explain why they could only show us what they saw before they were defeated, and why they don't remember Omegamon being there was because they lost at that point. And in Valkyrimon's flashback in episode 63, we had seen other mega level Digimon losing the battle and being deleted. Some of the eight chosen Megas, in fact. One Greymon and Metal Gururumon almost at that point. Then we have Omegamon versus Nintogmon in episode 18. By far the most controversial appearance of the reboot. Not primarily because of what it is, but just how it looked. I'm I'm not gonna drag this is this video is not for animation and visuals it's did it make sense and did it make sense not to make sense at that time not the most glamorous of omegamon appearances but it appeared in the same way as in episode two and three at least from most angles Greymon and Gurumon again, Tokyo at risk again, Hikari and Takari referred to again, coming up against a mega level Digimon which is far more powerful than it should be again. And I have to say Omegamon here makes far more sense than episode 2 and 3, as all of the other Digimon were exhausted from a battle with an amplified Orochimon. So it literally was the last miracle, much like in the actual war. Then in the reboot we had the Millenniumon battle. Why did Omegamon not show up against Millenniumon if Millenniumon was a part of the Great Catastrophe? Retrospectively, it's puzzling why they didn't use Omegamon considering what we know now about the Great Catastrophe and its many stages, and such a powerful villain too. And considering they actually fought before, like in episode 63 in Valkyrimon's flashback, you would think they'd have this rematch showdown, but no. Despite the fact that the digital world's Gaia Force attack was just as sincere to the reboot narrative as Omegamon would have been, and to the understanding of the crest in episode 64, why would Omegamon not show up when it was designed to do so? But remember, we discussed a formula of the scenarios of which Omegamon appeared, with Greymon and Gurumon, other warriors being exhausted, other Digimon not being available to fight, it has to be the very last miracle. So I think it was something to do with the fact that Yamato and Gabimon got caught in Millenniumon's pocket dimension, so they couldn't make contact if they tried to, they being Taiji and Agumon and Yamato and Gabimon. They were separated in literal different space times. Further to this, by the time that Taiji and Greymon freed the others from Millenniumon's grasp, because of the interaction with the Crest and the Light of Hope, a different solution became available that time. Therefore, Omegamon isn't the last miracle. So on this occasion, there really isn't explanation as to why Omegamon didn't show up if you are paying attention to the formulas of its previous showings, how Omegamon is presented as the last miracle on three occasions, and this is still consistent with its function in the world. Plus, it would be a little unfair if Omegamon could be made, regardless of the literal spatial obstacles between. And I think a lot of people are okay with the fact that Godramon and Holygemon showed up. 
I think a lot of people were. So, it's consistent, makes sense, doesn't contradict the previous established things, and brought us something new. I think this much was shown. Now, I refer you to episode 51, the episode about the crest. The crest existed at the very start of the digital world. Since its birth, as per episode 51, the crest was stated by Wisemon to be designed to stop the Great Catastrophe. Omegamon is the great power of the crests combined. In Godgemon Hojimon's case, it was a different solution, and therefore Omegamon's role in the world, in the universe of the reboot, was predetermined from the very beginning. Not the beginning of the reboot, that conceptual canon. It was exactly its destiny to battle the Great Catastrophe. This much we know, Omegamon is far more ancient than the Chosen One's involvement and that of the Ancient War. And now we get to the meaty part, episode 63, Valkymon's flashback and his memories, Omegamon's purpose and role revealed. All the things you've just stated, Omegamon is exactly that. Now, Valkymon having the answers to the Ancient War and an accurate retelling of that war made far more sense than Valdemon and Lotmon. And this kind of information being available was rationalized by Valkymon being able to put its spiritual essence into a physical being and thus retaining all of his memories. We learned a lot about Omegamon, how the warrior's souls gather from the wishes of all living things. But particularly, the spicy bit is when Valkymon said, it is an existence which surpasses space-time. That's a very particular line, isn't it? So let's talk about what you guys thought. Many people gathered that this meant that Omegamon can only exist at one point in time, therefore exceeding time, beyond time, and therefore, because of his many appearances across the franchise in be it Data Squad or our war game, Omega One has to travel across the Digimon multiverse to wherever he is summoned, etc. So for example, Omega One finishes a shift in our war game and then travels through space-time to a different universe, i.e. the reboot, to then clean up Millennium On as it did. It's the same entity beyond space-time. Now look, I cannot confirm nor deny this, okay? It kind of sounds cool because it makes Omegamon seem OP because that would be OP, like it would be. But I strongly believe that this is not the case. I also believe that it is hyperbole and also a poor choice of words if taken non-literally. Why do I think this? Well, at no point in the reboot have they ever alluded to the fact or referenced any of the other Digimon canons, universes, timelines, servers, whatever you want to call them. They wanted to keep the reboot separate from that as a means of introducing new people to the franchise without overcomplicating them with Spaghetti Hoops Digimon lore, which I appreciate because it is Spaghetti Hoops Digimon lore. I believe when Valkymon said this, he meant more literally surpassing space-time, meaning the years that have gone by, like in episode 51, since the beginning of the digital world itself, that much time has passed, and across space, since it appeared in many locations whenever the requirements were needed, in the many instances of the Great Catastrophe. It even shows you different locations in the flashback. So I think they mean time and space more literally, rather than philosophically if you would like. It kind of seems like it surpasses space-time in the way that it has been done. Like, he kind of showed up wherever he was needed. So I, so I kind of feel like Valkymon said this more symbolically as hyperbole to add more emphasis to Omegamon's importance in defeating the Great Catastrophe. Again, I can't confirm nor deny this, but that interpretation of surpassing space-time is problematic for what Toei wanted to do with the reboot and why it was created in the first place, so I don't really buy that interpretation. It sounds cool, but I don't buy it because of what the reboot was supposed to be and what it was supposed to do. I digress, but we discover that it is the same thing as before. The answer to defeating the Great Catastrophe, the Great Power, is the same power that they have used before. Ergo, making sense of its previous appearances, and why it exists, and why it happens when it happens against very specific enemies. And furthermore, it's fully realized, fully understood appearance in the semi-finale of the reboot. Was the Chosen Ones intentionally stopping the Great Catastrophe rather than accidentally? Which is kind of what made it feel like this kind of is Omegamon's debut. Omegamon before was just a miracle, but now it's a fully realized function and intentional power used by the heroes. It's a different kind of Omegamon as we perceive it. By using the crest power, which are fully obtained across the crest quest, reinforced by the light of hope from all living things, not only in the digital world, but also in the human world, as a consequence to Abadamon breaking down the barriers between. And then finally, the battle between Omegamon and the Abadamon core. This was very appropriate considering how they're on the same spectrum of existence versus nothingness, hence their similar body shape and composition, but also look dramatically different in style because of the things they represent on that same spectrum are at opposite ends. Omegamon formed through the light of hope, Abadamon formed through all the negative, repressed energy of the network, an intense, closely matched battle in which any side 
could have lost. And this is shown because whenever each participant of that battle actually landed a clean hit, it was severe and mortally damaging. After the Chosen once again bring about another miracle through the power of the Crest, which they now fully understand, which they now fully realise how to do, and there is something very meaningful about Omegamon's mode change and slide to Omegamon Alter S in the double cannon, double sword forms, because in this reboot it is only a Bardemon who truly desires the complete oblivion of everything. Even Digimon born from darkness such as Skull Nightmon and Debimon are opposed to this. Omegamon isn't the only one who desires to fight for the continuation of life. It's merely just what it symbolizes. Omegamon is a proxy, if you will, for all living things. Through the adventures the Chosen Ones had, Omegamon had a connection to all those experiences. Digimon who were exposed to the Crest influence, hence why they referred to the friend Digimon in that scene. This is why I believe the Crest instilled Omegamon with new power. It wasn't some random Shonen power up. It was simply doing a head count, a simple head count those who want abolition, and those who want existence, only discovered through the adventure of the Chosen. And in doing so, Megamon absorbing the Crest would link into the experiences of both Crest Grumon and Blitz Greymon, data available to use. This is why Omegamon Alter S existing in the first place makes sense. It was a good way of evening the playing field. After all, if a bad one had existed at the very beginning of the digital world, much like why the crests were designed to stop the Great Catastrophe at the very beginning, and had caused the Ancient War in the past, then that means Obarwan had experience of Omegamon on three separate occasions before the final battle and was ready for it. And we can support this argument when we consider episodes 66 and 67. Joel points out that Obarwan actually lashed out at the Chosen in panic when it identified the crests as a threat. Remember this. However, in episode 67, Obarwan allows Omegamon to proceed to the Obadamon core without attacking it, and even Taichi spells out for us that Obadamon is waiting for a battle. Therefore, this shows that a shocking new miracle born from the adventure of the Chosen was necessary to defeat Obadamon, to save existence as we know it. And this would also explain why Omegamon Alter S had a much easier time against Obadamon than the regular Omegamon, because Obadamon just could not have known of Omegamon Alter S, a holy knight made from the data of an ancient Digimon and a legendary warrior. And as we previously mentioned, if a decisive blow could be landed, the consequences could be severe. And because Obadamon couldn't have known about Omegamon Alter S, when it did land the hits, they were in fact severe. Omegamon was always going to be the great power that we'd already seen, yes. I understand that, but we know now the adventure is over. It is only because of the Chosen Ones and their adventure, their experiences which made this new power even possible. If the Chosen hadn't completed their Crest's quest along the way and made the friendships and bonds that they had to have their support, the Crest's powers could have never been activated and the inability, therefore, to invoke Omegamon's clear latent potential. So Omegamon was the key to defeat the Great Catastrophe, yes, but it was enabled by the adventure. And this concludes our fleshing out of Omegamon in Digimon Adventure 2020. With the reboot having ended and Digimon Ghost Game having begun, being two episodes in, the Ghost Game videos and theories and explanation videos will probably roll out in waves. So this video I want to be very special as a means of rationalizing what we had from the reboot. And it wasn't just the hot mess that people on a surface level thought it was. I stand by that. I'll fall on the sword by that. And those of you who watch this video carefully and attentively, as I know you would, will understand this. And for that, I appreciate you. Thank you for making it this far. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. There will be reboot videos in the future, of course, but just not loads like I did before. You know what I mean. I really appreciate you sticking with me through this meaty one, but most importantly, take care.